This program is brought to you in part by C. Larry First and the crew from Racing Action Today. Also, as an added feature, Lime Rock Park has partnered up with Metro North to bring race fans round trip from Grand Central Station for special events during the year. Please check the Lime Rock Park website for dates and time. Welcome to Race in Action Today. We're here today to bring you the action from our favorite race venue, Lime Rock Park, the road racing center of the east. It's going to be kind of a special day today and kind of different for us as we're covering a practice event for the Grand Am Rolex Series, which will the race will be in uh, Memorial Day weekend. And what kind of makes today very special is... The Grand Am Series has added a new type of car, the Daytona Prototypes, which have never raced, uh, actually, I believe, at this racetrack. So the, the practice today uh, and testing becomes very important. Also, there'll be some GT cars, and uh, hopefully we're going to get to talk to as many people as we can uh, to see how they like the racetrack and uh, see how the track did weather the winter up here because sometimes uh you know even though the track has been repaved recently uh the winter sometimes wreak havoc uh with frost heaves and that kind of thing but i'll tell you it's been raining all morning and the sun is coming out and i think it's time to strap in and hold on tight we're about to see what grand am racing's all about and the people who make it happen Yes, we have Alex Gertie with us who drives this Gaines Co. Uh, uh, Daytona prototype. And I, I'll tell you, I, I am so excited to see how these cars do on this racetrack, Alex. And uh, judging by the way you're bundled up, you're not used to this cold weather. Yeah, that's true. I, I guess the sun just finally poked out. But, uh, yeah, we're excited to be here. Excited to try out the track and see what these cars are like on, around here. Uh, you know, we're coming back in a month. And uh, we're going to have a one-day event on, on that Monday. Um, so, uh, you know, we have to practice qualifying race on that day. So we're, we're hoping to get some good work done today and, and uh, you know, know how to get around this place quickly. Now, did you, have you ever raced at Lime Rock before? I raced one time in 98 uh, in a uh, Barber Dodge Pro Series car. And uh, so I know it's a lot different these days. And, uh, you know, they've done the repaving and everything. And so it, it should be uh, quite a bit different than, than back then. Well, the, the new configuration, too, you know. Uh. Yeah, new configuration. You know, I've never done that little chicane before the before you go up the, the hill. So uh, that should be interesting. Now, tell me, where are you from? I'm from California, uh, from Newport Beach. And uh, so, yeah, it's a long, long trek out here. Uh, we just came from a race out in uh, Virginia. So uh, we just drove up from... Uh, from Virginia, about a 10-hour drive, and uh, enjoying the uh, the beautiful. Uh, so this is no, yeah, this is New England. You never know what you're going to wake up to. That's true. That's <laughs> true. I'm not used to the rain like this. Well, we're certainly going to keep an eye out for you today. Uh, I know you'll be going out pretty soon, and uh, I have a feeling these cars are going to get around this place pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're definitely a quick car. You know, over 600 horsepower, and and uh, should be fun. Uh, to watch, see how we negotiate the, the track with the GT cars out there also. Yeah, I, I, I understand you're going to be racing with the GT cars on race day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's only a mile and a half, kind of a tight course. Uh, it should get interesting. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're going to have, whatever, 30-plus 30, 30 cars and uh, on a 50-second track. So uh, that doesn't leave much room. Well, we want to wish you luck and thank you for your interview. And uh, we're going to keep an eye out for you. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Alex. Okay. You're great. Thanks. Yes, this Gaines Co. Uh, Daytona prototype is just an excellent example of, of a Daytona prototype. It's a Riley Chevrolet powered uh, car and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I tell you, I would love to have the opportunity to bring this car out on a racetrack and just see how much I could scare myself. Yes, we have John Potter with us who drives this absolutely beautiful Porsche GT car, his Grand Am car. 
And I'll tell you, John, this car looks like you're raring to go today. What, uh, you, what, what are you going to get accomplished today here? Well, you know, we're here at Lime Rock to do some testing, um, you know, figure some stuff out, work on a setup. We're coming back here in a few weeks uh, for, uh, for a pretty big race we hope to do well at. You know, we're a first, uh, first-year team. Uh, we're doing uh, pretty good. I think we're fifth in team standings in class, which is pretty good for a first year. But we've got a lot of good people here that have been around a while. Um, and uh, we're just excited to get some stuff done and make some progress. So if you, being fifth, you, you must have had some pretty good finishes up to this point. You know, we've had some good finishes and some not so good finishes. And, you know, it just it's it's a long season, though. And, you know, that it you can you can work it out, you know, make up. You can you can kind of make up some points later. But uh, it's the, the ones who win don't have to. And that's why we're fifth and not first. Unfortunately. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, the Porsches do very well here. You know, just a tight little track. Have you ever raced on Lamb Rock before? Um, I have. I did the uh, Continental Challenge or then Coney Challenge race last year here. And uh, in 2008, I did the Rolex race. Actually, with the same co driver It's the first time I ever drove with my current co-driver, Craig Stanton, actually. In so, so you have good experience here. And now tell me, what's it like to be out there with, with, with these Daytona prototypes? Well, it'll be, uh, it'll, it's always exciting, regardless of what track you're at. It'll be more so here because Lime Rock's such a, uh, such a tight track. So it'll, we have to all work together and get along, or uh, somebody's going to lose that battle there. Yeah, yeah, this could get interesting. Yeah, it should. Uh, the last time uh, Rolex Series was here, it was uh, GT only in 08, again, the race I did here with Craig. Um, and so we didn't have to deal with the uh, DPs. It'll be a whole new element. Well, where are you from, John? Uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, lived in Salt Lake for the last few years, and um, well, I said it was funny. A little local tie in here, not not really, but this was one of the first tracks I ever drove, actually, a long time ago. So it's like coming home. Exactly. I, even though I'm from a long way away, I do actually feel like I know this place pretty well. Well, we're going to keep an eye out for you today, and I have a feeling that during race day, I think you're going to do well. And but I'm kind of anxious to see how this. Uh, Porsche uh, is going to handle today. Now, are you using rain tires or not, or how are you going to handle this today? Well, we'll see uh, what the track looks like by the time we're actually out there. You know, there's some cars on track now. They're drying it out a little bit for us, and uh, we'll take a look. We'll see what happens. Now, how long of a time? What do you go out, like for a half-hour stint and then come back in, or how do you work this? Well, it, we leave that up to our engineer, basically. We're, we're kind of here to make some progress on the car and get ready for the race. So it's all about making the car faster. You know, me, me and my uh, co-driver both have plenty of time here, so it's not so much about the driver as it is about making the car happy and do what we want it to do. So, I mean, you could actually pull into the, pe uh, into the pit area there and kind of make adjustments and just go right back out. Yep, exactly. we got a whole bunch of equipment there. It should uh, depends on what the adjustment is. You know, we don't change things as fast as the uh, purpose-built race cars do. You know, it's a Porsche. It's still a, you know, started, it's, it's the tub is still a streetcar part, even though Porsche Motorsports builds a lot of parts. I'll tell you, I love the GT cars. Uh, you know, the, it just reminds me of these are the cars you buy off the, the showroom floor. And uh, to me, they're just the greatest, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, especially the Porsches, too. You know, uh, they're, they're the closest. They're still a factory-built race car, but it is, at its heart, is a street car. It's still got the same, surrounded by the same steel you would uh, one that you buy at the dealership. <laughs> okay. We want to wish you luck, and uh, hopefully we're going to see you on race day. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot, John. You were excellent. <laughs> yes, we have Greg Stanton here who drives this Magnus... Uh, racing Porsche and I, I was talking with your co-driver John, John Potter. Potter there and uh, you guys are having fun yeah we are this is a, basically a new team here at Magnus Racing I think what we did is we uh, uh, got everybody together somewhere around October November of last year bought everything it's all bright brand brand new bright and cheery and all the guys that work together different teams but work together over the years they've been trained by some of the best Porsche mechanics engineers uh, uh, on the planet and so they all came together they're good friends and they work hard together they're all racers which is exciting yeah now what do you think about running with uh, the daytona prototypes i mean on a tight track like this uh, this could get interesting yeah really interesting i think everybody should come out and see what's going to occur out here at the races it's uh you know it's a short track it's not very wide you know there's a lot of elements there in terms of technical parts of the track that you know it's one lane 
and now you've got cars that are trying to pass, be passed. You're trying to race in your own class. It's like Bristol on a Saturday night if you're a, if you're a NASCAR yeah. fan, right? It could get busy. Yeah, it could get very busy. So what's occurring is that we're trying to race our own race. I'm trying to win the GT class. The DPs are trying to win their class, and they're sometimes between 7 and second, 10 seconds quicker than we are. So it's really a challenge to be able to navigate through different classes of, uh, of racing and still win your class. Now tell me, have you been to this track before yourself? I've, I've wanted this track before. It's, it's, it's an awesome track. I love it. I love the town. I love, I mean, look at it. It's beautiful here, you know, and, and the countryside where you can come up and watch the race. You can see almost every turn from different parts of the track. It's how road racing always was, where you come bring your family, bring your lunch, park somewhere, park on a turn, go see another turn, and, and really experience all there is to experience. You come down to the pits, you can see, you know, talk to the drivers, We'll get you, we'll let you sit in the car, you know, take a picture. I'll it. tell you, I am so impressed at this place. I love it up here. Uh, I recently went to an event down in Florida, a road racing event. I won't mention where or anything, and I, I just I just couldn't get warm to the place. Yeah, this is a real small town feel to it. The history and the culture here is just really amazing. You talk to people that are from the area, and they love the track. They love coming here, and and they know the history. So many people know the history of back in the Trans Am, the Can Am days, and, and some of the small, you know, uh, the amateur SECA days, which was huge. They get huge crowds, and oh, yeah, it was, it's spectacular. And the town knows all about it, which is great. Well, we certainly are going to keep an eye out for you. I have a feeling you're going to do very well, and we look forward to seeing you on race day. Maybe we'll talk in the podium. What do you think of that? That's what my goal is. I don't leave the house without thinking that I can win here at, at, uh, at Lime Rock. All right, thank you, Greg. It's just a pleasure sitting, meeting you, and good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thanks. You're great. Yes, we have Will Turner with us, who uh, owns, operates, drives, does about everything but wash the dishes with this uh, Turner uh, GT car. And I'll tell you, Will, I mean, your cars have really done outstanding, except this year you're, you're, you're kind of winless this year. Is that what you were telling me? Yeah, you know, uh, in, in the GT series, we're, we're winless, but uh, coming off a strong almost uh finish uh last weekend at vir we were uh running in second place until the last lap and we uh went for the for the lead and kind of got the short end of the stick um didn't didn't end up with a win there but we're looking forward to uh coming to our home track which is lime rock in the end of may putting on a show and uh getting up on the podium well i'll tell you i was here last year during the race and you you i i was just at awe of how this whole series i mean it was you were beating and banging fenders and right to, i mean it was just unbelievable i mean is it that way this year too you know this uh a couple things first lime rock's a small track and we're going to fit a lot of cars on here right and uh it's an exciting race this is probably the most competitive race of the year as far as excitement level and as far as anybody can win you know um being here at lime rock with uh starting you know 40 50 60 cars sometimes anything can happen and it usually does the uh, uh the turner bmws uh we 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 say we have an unfair advantage here because you know bmw sponsors a track and we've done so well here over the years i think we've had uh i think we've had nine wins out of 14 uh 14 years racing here wow that that's really impressive now now tell me this this car uh you feel two cars in each class we have one car in GT, which is the M6 that's behind me, and we have two cars in the GS class, and we're going to race one car in the ST class. So uh, Memorial Day weekend, we're going to have four cars racing in three different classes. Well, that's going to keep you a little busy. Huh? You, you going to do any driving this week, that weekend? Yeah, I'll be in the, uh, I'll be in the ST car. So uh, myself and my teammate Don Salama, who, uh, who have won here many times, are going to be uh, doing some driver's duties too. Well... Also, I wanted to ask you, you got a little bit of Connecticut background here, I understand. Is that correct? Yeah, again, it, it, it's, excited because, it's exciting to be here because I grew up about 30 miles away, and uh, Lime Rock was the first place that I ever drove on the racetrack. It's the first place that I took a win, and I got family and friends and customers. They all come out every Memorial Day, rain or shine, to, uh, to come see us do our stuff. Yeah, I think you're going to have a big contingency here because... Uh, you certainly have a lot of fans in the wingland, and uh, we're going to keep an eye out for you. I got a feeling you're going to do well. Yeah, again, you, you never know, but we're going to give it. We're going to give it our all as we usually do. Thanks a lot for the interview, and good luck. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Thanks. Will. You were great. Great. 
Yes, moving over a car, we have Eric Curran, who's driving his beautiful Corvette. And I kind of seen you in action, Eric, in the stock cars, and uh, I'm really happy to see you in this Corvette. Now, how have you been doing this year? Well, uh, so far this year has been a tough one for us. We, um, you know, we're just coming into the Rolex series, the Grand American Rolex series with, uh, with Wheel and Engineering and uh, Sonny Wheel and Marsh Racing and the whole crew. Um, we had been running a series called World Challenge previous in the last number of years, and we've done a number of stock car races as well. So we're new to the Grand American Series. We built this new 31 Corvette, and uh, you know we're just getting involved. A little late start to the season, so we're only a couple races in, but we're happy to be here, Lime Rock Park, which is uh, where Wheel and Engineering's from Connecticut, and, and uh, all the guys in the crew. And I'm from Massachusetts, so we're all New Englanders. And oh, it's like home co homecoming. <laughs> Absolutely, no, that's a lot of fun. I've done a ton of races here, and it's it's exciting to be back to the home area. Well, I'll tell you, Eric, I've watched you out in this track, and you look, you really get along well here. You know how to get around this place, and uh, I'm hoping you get this car sorted out because I got a feeling we could be in the podium come uh, Memorial Weekend. Well, we'd like to think so, for sure. I mean, I think I've won over 15 races here over the years and, uh, you know, started racing SECA regional races back in the early 90s. So it's exciting to come back here. Uh, you know, I've been in stock cars. I've been in in uh, Le Mans cars, I've been in uh, you know Rolex cars, I've been in a lot of different cars here, stock cars, uh, you know, and just had a great time. This is really fun to be here and the whole crew and and you know really pushing for wheel and engineering, which uh, you know is from the state of Connecticut as well. So. Yeah, where about are they in Connecticut? Uh, They're for, well, well, the old Lime is where the race shop is. Okay. You know, so basically, you know, the the race team and everything is done. The Corvettes, everything's built there, uh, right out of old Lime. So. And the whole crew and uh, most of the guys, a couple guys from Rhode Island, but for the most part, we're all New Englanders, and uh, you know this is our home place. Now, Sonny uh, drives the car with you. Yep, yep. This is a two-driver series, so the races are mostly two hours and forty-five minutes, and typically Sonny will start the race and run forty-five minutes or so, and get out of the car, and I get in and run the remaining part of the race. So. All right, so uh, now, is there a certain amount of time a driver has to stay in the car? The driver has to stay in the car for forty-five minutes. Okay, that's mandatory. That's mandatory. And, and then you could make the move. And, and, and of course, making the move, uh, a caution will weigh big or no? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, you know, if a caution comes out at about 45 minutes, that's, that's ideal. We can come in, we can do a driver change, um, we can top up the fuel and, and do uh, four new Pirelli tires as well. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, we're going to keep our eye out for you today, but uh, we're going to be back Memorial Day weekend. And... Uh, we want to we want to see you do well. Yeah, it's exciting. We really want to do well as well, and uh, you know we'll have all of our local uh, family and friends, and all the people from Wheel and Engineering will be down. So, yeah, this is an exciting event for us. This is a big a big one. Yeah, I uh, I, I tell you, this Grand Am series got it all. I mean, uh, the races have been excellent. Yeah, no doubt. No, very competitive. A lot of great drivers. A lot of great teams. And uh, it's really exciting for us. Uh, I wish we got started a year or so ago, but. Here we are, and you got to start at some point, so we'll keep chugging forward and uh, you know, hopefully uh, aim for some big results here at Lime Rock in a few weeks. Well, we want to wish you luck, and uh, we're going to look forward to coming and uh, watch you in the race. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Thanks a lot. We will now have the opportunity to go to a driver and team meeting held by a Lime Rock Park official going over all the new things in the track and what to do and what not to do. New West Bend you are not taking. However, that is a good safe runoff area in case you run into any trouble. And likewise on the, uh, on the uh, uphill, you can, if you overshoot, use the classic course as your, uh, as your runoff for the uh, new uphill. We have safe haven cones around the track. They will be a tall green or a tall orange cone where you can pull the car behind just in case the uh, uh, car does something horrible and makes all sorts of grindy noises and what have you. And uh, the corner workers will report the situation. Uh, we will probably in the afternoon, because it's just going to be open session from 1 o'clock on, in the afternoon, we will have to call black flag all the stuff on the session to pick up something uh, from out on the track. The, uh, there is a puddle on driver's right at the left-hander that you have to watch out for. 
there may also be, if it rains any badder than it, badly, than it is right now, where did I study English, right? Uh, also on uh, No Name Straight, uh, the uh, first session will be at noon. It will be for the Daytona prototypes for a half an hour. Then after that, a half hour session for the GT cars. And then at one o'clock, it'll be everybody and it'll be an open session entirely. Uh, paddock is, in fact, counterclockwise, theoretically five miles an hour. Uh, watch out for everybody. It would be appreciated. Do you have everything? In it, in it falls grid. In it falls grid. Okay. Mount at the last gate. All right. False grid is all the way down. And you come in at false grid and then in to pit in. Watch out driver's left. We do not have someone down there. So keep an eye out driver's left for anyone coming into pit lane. Pit out is up here. And uh, uh, one, you go left for the track, right for in the paddock. Uh, we will be doing black all for everything. I think we've covered all that. And medical, medical is at the end of the pits. Medical is at the end of the pits. <laughs> if you should... Uh, should stuff a car very hard into any one of the barriers, we will be sending out medical to pick you up and the car to be picked up separately. You will be taking the medical. No motors, uh, no motors left, no motors. Yeah, no motors until noon, please. Okay, gas is in B paddock? Yes, everybody knows where gas is. Yes, B paddock. <laughs> And I believe that's it. Any questions? Down the hill so that they know you're going to slow up a little bit more and stay to the right. You're not going to track out. The yeah, it just comes up pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, gentlemen, right. have fun. <laughs> we are now going to go out on the racetrack and take some of the action as these cars were testing, uh, the GT cars and the Daytona prototypes, and they look very impressive out here. Yes, we have a Daytona prototype out there, uh, a Ford Riley, uh, number 60, I believe, and uh, this team has been very successful. It looks very impressive on the line of the track. It's a GT car out there, number 94, from Turner Motorsports, I believe driven by Bill Overling, and this car really, really gets around this track good, and they really, really do a great job on the motorsport uh, team. Another lap for the Crown Royal car, uh, number 60, and uh, looks like they're getting comfortable out there. Daytona prototype, uh, number 75, the Crown Racing, uh, is out there and looks like they're getting kind of used to this racetrack. Daytona prototypes, even on the wet track, seem to uh, like this line ride. Really anxious to see which they how they're going to do uh, with the GT cars out there. It should be really interesting. GT class, we have the Speed Source number 70 Mazda, 
I'm really not sure which driver they got in it today. Uh, looks like they're getting pretty comfortable. car and number 68 is another speed source car and uh, these Mazdas I'll tell you they really make a racket here at the speed uh, turning these things around 10,000 rpm the way they sound of the show uh, as uh, another prototype car is out in the racetrack and uh, I'll tell you they are very pretty cars and it's just been another outstanding day here at Lime Rock and uh, I tell you I really urge everybody to come on up and uh, see what this racetrack is about and uh, there will be an event coming up here uh, Memorial Day weekend it will be an excellent show to come to. We come to the conclusion of our show today, and I hope everybody has enjoyed it as much as we did producing it. As usual, it's always an outstanding day here at Lime Rock. I will admit it was a little wet and a little cold today during this test event, but it was always a great pleasure to come here. I want to thank our cameraman, Billy Majak, and our intern, also Luis Gonzalez, for giving us the help today to film this show. And I'll tell you, I just can't wait for this event to come Memorial Day weekend as these cars have really taken to this track. You know, the, the Daytona prototypes are really something special. And to see them out in the track with the GT cars is truly something special. I hope everybody has a chance to come out here and see this uh, track firsthand, and believe me, you won't be disappointed. And most of all, and last of all, I want to thank you, the viewers, for being with us on Racing Action Today. This program is brought to you in part by C. Larry First and the crew from Racing Action Today. Please email us when you get a chance at www.raceaction at aol.com. We surely would love to hear from you.